How would you write code to draw a random card from a deck? If you said you'd write it in Python, then why don't you go ahead and fix yourself a nice cup of chamomile tea and then go and find a different video? Because this video is about how to do it the hard way in C code. My side project draws random cards zillions of times, and I needed my code to be fast. In this video, I'll show you some of the bit twiddling tricks that I use to optimize card manipulation, including some x86 intrinsics. Although I'm targeting x86-64, many concepts will apply to other architectures. Okay, let's play some cards. Each possible card can be an integer. Did you know that there are Unicode code points for every card in a standard deck? I'm just going to use the numbers from 0 to 51. The noob way to represent a hand or deck of cards would be use an array. We need to know how many cards there are in our array so we could zero terminate it, or we could just track it in a different variable. Let's do that. Here's the code to draw a random card. First, I generate a random index between zero and the size of the deck. I discussed how to do this in my previous video. I remember the card at that index in the array, and then I mem copy the cards to plug the gap. How fast do you think this code will be? We'll see soon. But another way to represent the cards is to use a bit set. Each card has a dedicated bit that will be either 1 or 0 if it's in the deck or not. There are only 52 possible cards, and that fits nicely into a 64-bit integer. Instead of using a separate variable to track how many cards we have, we can use the built-in pop count intrinsic to count the cards. On x86, that compiles to the popcnt instruction, and it only takes one cycle. It also looks cool. Double underscores generally means badass code. By the way, the double L's at the end of the pop count tell the compiler we want to work with long longs, which are 64-bit numbers on most platforms. Here's the code to test if you have a specific card in your hand. We convert the card into a bit mask by shifting, and then we test against the hand. But the code has a bug. Can you spot it? I'll give you 30 seconds. Okay, the bug is we're casting a 64-bit value to an int. That hand and bit calculation produces a 64-bit value. But since we are returning an int, there's an implicit cast. And the int is only going to be 32 bits on almost every system. So the code only works right if the card is less than 32. I had almost this exact bug in my project, and I didn't notice for over a year because it wasn't causing a crash, just subtle logic problems. Clang didn't even give me a warning about it either, even when I turned on W all and W extra. So congratulations if you found the bug. Here's the correct code. It explicitly compares the value to zero. Now the function returns one or zero. Now back to the main problem. Let's write some code to draw a random card from a deck. We'll use the pop count intrinsic to count the cards, and then as before, generate a random number between zero and that count. Call that number k. Now we have to find the kth one bit that's in our bit set. How would you do that? One way would be to find and clear the lowest set bit, and then do that operation k times. To clear the lowest set bit, there's a trick. Mask the number with itself minus 1. So why does that work? If you think about it, you'll realize that our number has two parts. One part contains the lowest set bit and all the zeros to the right. It's therefore always going to be a power of 2. The other part has all the higher bits, but we can ignore that. When we subtract 1 from a power of 2, we're going to get a binary number that has one fewer digit, and all of the digits are going to be 1s. Essentially, we are flipping all of the bits. So when we and the two numbers together, it's going to clear the lowest bits, and then the high bits are going to stay the same. The resulting number, then, has cleared the lowest set bit. Back to our function. We're going to loop k times using our trick. 
When the loop completes, we'll have stripped out the k lowest set bits. Now we want to know what is the index of the lowest remaining set bit. There's a cool intrinsic for this, built-in CTZ. CTZ stands for count trailing zeros, and that's what it does. The number of trailing zeros is going to be the index of that kth card, which is what we want to return. CTZ is also the name of the x86 instruction that it's going to emit. Do you think this code is going to be faster or slower than the array method? I benchmarked both methods. The array function clocked in at about 71 million cards per second, and the bit set function was slower, only 55 million cards per second. Why is it slower? The key is in the loops. In the array method, we calculate the result early. There's a loop in the mem copy, but that happens asynchronously in your superscalar CPU. So the calling function can go ahead and do calculations with the drawn card. It doesn't have to wait for the mem copy to finish. Although the bit set uses less working memory, it doesn't know the result until the end. It has what's called a loop carried dependency, and it's especially slow since we're drawing a random card meaning that the CPU isn't going to be able to predict how many iterations are in the loop. There's going to be a lot of expensive branch mispredictions. Enter the x86 pdef instruction, or parallel bits deposit. This is one of my favorite instructions. Intel added it over a decade ago. pdef takes two source operands. The second operand is a mask. Only the one bits matter in this operand the zero bits carry on to the result. In the first operand, it's the low bits that matter. PDEP scatters these bits into the mask to get to the result. That is, it takes the lowest bit from the first operand and ands it with the lowest one bit in the second operand to determine the bit at that position. It does the same thing with the next bit in the first operand and the next one bit in the second operand, and so on. All of this takes only three cycles. I'm going to use pdep to eliminate that while loop. Remember that we're generating a random number k between 0 and the number of cards that we have in the hand. I'm going to set up the first pdep operand to have a 1 at position k. The second operand is simply our hand. pdep then picks out exactly the bit I want, which is the bit corresponding to the kth card. Here's what the pdep code looks like. So far, we've been using compiler built-ins which are supported by all architectures, but pdep is Intel only, so we need to pound include the proper header. This function is now jammed packed with intrinsics, pop count, pdep, and ctz. So do you think this will be faster? Even if it's not, I think it's probably worth using just because it looks so cool. I mean, probably nobody would ever refactor this code because it looks like we really know what we're doing. Okay, let's benchmark it. The array method was fastest at 72 million cards per second, and the pdep code is much faster, almost three times faster in fact. Our work has paid off. This video has been very x86 focused. I've ported the code to ARM, and it was kind of a pain, at least on the Apple Silicon that I have. None of the intrinsics translated directly. CTZ became CLZ, that's count leading zeros instead of trailing zeros. So the compiler was emitting code to reverse the bits. Pop count exists, but only in a vectorized form that turned out to be slower. ARM does have an instruction analogous to PDEP called BDEP, but it's not present in Apple Silicon. Right now I'm using a lookup table and I'm still thinking about ways to optimize further. I'll talk about the ARM stuff in a future video. I hope I'll see you then.